Hey everybody, how's it going? Paul Breck of HSRN back with you for another installment of the OIA series currently going on. Joining me now on the Hawaii Sports Radio Network, someone who has continued working his way up the ranks of the all-time Chaminade men's soccer record books, a 2018 graduate of Kaiser and now sixth year senior at Chaminade, Silver Swords goalkeeper Brandon Yasue. Thanks for joining me. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have a conversation with you because you you've had a pretty interesting career in a lot of different ways. You've had a lot of success throughout high school, uh, you know, three different appearances in the state championship game. I uh, started four years of varsity soccer at Kaiser and at, during your time at Chaminade, you've played or will be playing for three different head coaches, I believe, um, which is not necessarily a normal path for a lot of college athletes who go in and and are recruited by one coach and then see that coach all the way through. So we'll get into that a little bit as well. And then somebody who, like I said, making making your way into the record books pretty quickly. Uh, you're in the top three in Swords history for goalkeepers in saves with 143, uh, tied for third in wins. You're second for saves per match with just a hair under five a lot of times. Uh, games played and games started, you're third each in uh, those categories, respectively, for goalkeepers in Chaminade history. And then before you came to Chaminade, you had you were pretty active, I would say. You played six different sports over the course of 17 seasons at Kaiser. Those sports, bowling, football, volleyball, basketball, track and field, where you did a little bit of shot put, and then, uh, of course, a four-year starter for the soccer team. Right. Let's get into things, and that's enough. People, enough hearing from me. <laughs> first things first. Let's talk about how you got into soccer in the first place. Was that your first sport of the six, or did that kind of win you over against other sports? Um, I, you know what, I don't even think it really won me over. I still think that soccer and basketball is my favorite sports. I, I say fa basketball by far was my favorite sport throughout life. And I think soccer by the end of my college career took that over. Um, but I just started playing sports just when, ever since I was young, I just started maybe four or five, um, just my parents just threw me into everything and I kind of just fell in love with everything. And then as the years went on, I just continued to play. And they're like, do you want to choose a sport? And I'm like, yeah, I want to choose all of them. Can I choose all of them? And they're like, uh, I don't know if we, you can do that. And so when we got to high school, I, you know, there's a lot of administration things going on because they're like, uh, we, we don't know if you can play three sports in one season. Um, Unfortunately, they didn't even allow me to. I had to um, cut off baseball in high school um, just because you can't be at three football, uh, three fields at the same time. So, um, yeah, but I've just been playing ever since I was young. Um, just, um, just trying to play as many sports as I could, honestly. And, and then growing up there, first off, that's incredibly cool to play that many sports and, and almost push a, uh, the leadership at schools to be like, hey, <laughs> let me participate in things that I can't even uh, physically be there and splitting yourself so uh, thin. That's it's cool. When you think back on your youth athletic career growing up, are there any memories that stick out to you, whether that be soccer or one of those other sports that you were playing, uh, a memory that you've taken now into your, uh, I'll say, semi adult life in college? Yeah, um, I think definitely just all those days that I'm at the soccer field or the basketball field um, and you're having those big potlucks. Um, I feel like you don't have those big potlucks that you used to have um, when you were younger because of COVID and everything. Everything's not really back to where it used to be. Um, but I just remember those big barbecues we'd have after um, sports, whether that's at the Cocoa District Park for basketball and I'm just playing out there with my um, teammates till midnight. So the cops kick us out of the park. Um, so um, I guess those were the good old memories of just running around with your friends at the playground till, till you had to, your parents kicked you, uh, got you back home. <laughs> the, the community of sports yeah. is something that it's hard to replicate 
in, in a lot of places, or at least I've always found that. So it, it's cool to hear that you had that growing up as well. So I feel like it's a common thing to be kicked out of the park by the cops because stay yeah, too late. Yeah, I, I, I think high school here is just so much bigger than it is on the mainland. I feel like um, high school soccer or high school sports in general is just like college um, for the mainland. We, we take high school soccer, high school basketball, high school just sports in general, just um, we – we take it big. We go big. Um, graduations for high school is so big. I, I think my high school graduation was bigger than my college graduation. Um, so yeah, people show up. Definitely. The community is great. Um, I love uh, the Hawaii community for that. They always support. Um, and yeah. yeah. You touch on a few things that I, I'm excited to get into a bit more. And the first of which talked about high school and that's where I want to go back to first as I mentioned 2018 graduate of Kaiser High School in this series we've talked to a bunch of former OIA student athletes who have gone on to the collegiate level and I've asked each of them the same question and now I'll pose it to you of how did Kaiser prep you both athletically and academically going forward going into your college career as you prepped yourself for that next stage of life? Um, I think just the coaches that I've had at Kaiser, um, they always treated me like family. I'm still in contact with a lot of those coaches. Um, I see them, they're around in my community um, and they're just so supportive. I think the biggest thing that Kaiser has done for me is just that support. Um, they're always, they're always there. I mean, some of those coaches still check on me. Um, they still come out to my games. Um, one of my teachers, um, Auntie Tanya, she still currently teaches at Kaiser and she, um, is just always supporting me. Uh, I went, I recently went on a cruise with her. Um, so these teachers and these, the faculty at Kaiser, they just care about you. Um, you know, they want to see they want to see your success all the way through. They just, they don't just want you to get to that next level. They want you to get to the next level in life into adulthood and, and beyond that. I think that's incredibly important as you try and develop yourself into the, the person you want to become someday. And you need great people around you, not just in that time, but following that time as well. And with that support, obviously, that sometimes makes up for something. Were there struggles that you felt you faced going to an OIA school, a public school, where whether it be exposure for recruiting or resources, were there things that you look back on and you're like, yeah, wow, we we kind of made ends meet as best we could? Right. I think I think um, just having exposure is really hard. And I think that has to go with just Oahu in general just hard to get exposure from those mainland schools. Um, even just the college schools here, it's just hard to compete with how many people there are and you're on such a small island. So to really get yourself out there, I think it's hard. Um, I know like when I was trying to get my uh, footage for my athletic games, it's hard because not a lot of games are televised. Um, so when OC 16 does come out to your games, it's a big deal um, because that's one way that you can, you know, reach a bigger audience not just the community that just comes to your games so i think exposure is hard i don't necessarily think that um it was like high school that really hurt me like the admin or um, anything they were always so great to me um so i don't really have anything mean to say about kaiser i, I love kaiser um and sometimes i wish i could be back in kaiser because I, I i really miss that place I, I get that. And, and I think that's important too, you know, to have those type of experiences and be able to look back that fondly. It, it's not the case for every single person. So it, it's a testament to the staff yeah. at Kaiser, how well they treat you Definitely. or treat Definitely. students and alumni afterwards. And then you talked about it a little bit. Let's talk about Shamanad. How you, how'd you come to Shamanad? How'd the recruiting process go? We talked a little bit about exposure. Were you thinking about any schools on the mainland or was it always kind of wanting to stay in Hawaii? Um, beginning, I was always like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go away. I think a lot of people 
they're always like, yeah, I want to experience another school somewhere far away. Um, but at the end of the day, I think, I think I wanted to represent Hawaii. Um, you know, whether that was UH or HPU, Shamanad, um, I just wanted to have that like Hawaii on the back of my thing saying that, you know, I am here, I'm representing, um, my hometown. Um, so I thought that was really important to me. So I decided to try to go to UH or Shamanad. Um, UH does not have a soccer team. Um, and unfortunately I wasn't a bit good enough basketball player, or volleyball player, any of those to, to make it any of my other sports. So, um, I decided on soccer and I went to Chaminade and I haven't been more happy. I'm so glad I decided to stick it there. And, you know, you always have times that, you know, you, you feel like it's hard, especially during COVID time, you know, should I stay, um, you know, or should I just continue to get a full-time job? Um, but I'm so glad that I, uh, stuck it there and I'm on my sixth year at Chaminade. Um, I'm the, I am the grandpa on the team. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the grandpa on the team, but you've seen quite a bit and obviously you you've been able to compete at a, at a high level and, and progressively get better during your time. You've been a part of a few different regimes while at Chaminade. So the first coach that you tried out for, or, or, the first coach that you made contact with, they're not necessarily the one still in charge. Can you take us through what it's been like having to go through not just the global pandemic that all college athletes had to go through as well as the rest of the world, obviously, but having to go through not just one, but multiple head coaching switches? Right. I think having a head coach position change is never easy. Um, You're always scared on who you're going to get. Are they going to be mean? Are they going to be bad? You know? Um, I haven't felt that it really affected me. Um, I don't think it has affected my team in any way. Um, you know, every time we get a new coach, it's, it's been great. Um, this year it's a local coach, so he's going on to his second year. Um, I'm really excited for this next season. Um, but yeah, I don't think the coach has changed, although, you know, it's hard not having that same coach every single year. I don't think it really affected me um, in the way necessarily that COVID or um, other things have uh, shaped me. And then you mentioned it there. How did the COVID pandemic dealing with that as not just, you know, a college athlete, but as a person in general, how how was that? on you and how have you gone about, I don't want to say recovering here in the years following, but how have you gone about uh, rebuilding after? Right. I think COVID hit everyone hard. Um, Especially in Hawaii, we were locked down a lot longer than some of those other States. So um, it was hard. It was definitely hard. Um, We were going through a recent coach change um, right then and there too. Um, So it wasn't necessarily easy, um, especially with that mask rule. Playing in with a mask is just never easy. Um, so, yeah, I think that uh, we just had to push through. And uh, we're still technically still fighting COVID. Um, so those r- rules and regulations. But um, I'm happy it gave me another year. So um, I got more experience to play soccer. And, um, yeah. Yeah, you you've taken advantage of the the extra eligibility and also in terms of education. I mean, you you got your bachelor's degree in criminology and you know and then you're now pursuing a master's as well. Talk a little bit uh, about your education and your time at Chaminade there. What made you want to go into that career path and what is it that you specifically would like to do with it someday? Right. I think I started at Chaminade wanting to pursue sports. Um, so I went into physical therapy. Um, I thought that would be a streamline into sports. And then I was thinking back and I started coaching and I was like, maybe physical therapy isn't my thing. Um, so I got into psychology and then I switched my major again. And finally, I ended up with criminal justice. Um, my dad is a law enforcement officer, so uh, he's with HPD. So he's kind of influenced me to go the law enforcement path. And 
I graduated and then I decided to go into my master's to keep playing soccer and get that higher education. I am hoping to use that higher education um, as some type of federal job, whether that's the FBI or NCIS, um, maybe the Coast Guard, um, any federal government. And you know, I'm just trying to get my foot in the door. Um, and yeah, just any of any federal government, I'd love to. Um, some, something within investigations would be, um, is what I would really like. It sounds like a cool life path to go down, I'll say, albeit obviously can be a dangerous one. I'm sure you've gotten an up close look at that, having your your dad in the line of duty. Uh, let's talk a little bit about staying home. You mentioned it before how you had thought about going away, but really it was UH, Shamanad. What's it been like being able to have that support continue on obviously a super successful high school career i mentioned it at the top of this uh, interview that three appearances in a state title match and a four-year starter on varsity and then you get to shamanad and everybody still gets to support you how's that been for you during your five year four years five years whatever uh, of playing right i think it's amazing that i got to stay you know the local community is always there for you. Um, I, I've, I've, I've loved being um, in Hawaii and, you know, it's nice. You can't go to, you know, California and get the same beaches. Um, I've got to play soccer and surf, um, go to the beach. Um, I love it. I'm living the paradise life while playing collegiate soccer. Um, so I'm so grateful and blessed to be able to um, stay in Hawaii because not many athletes get to do that. Um, but yeah, I've been loving, um, the support and I also just wanted, you know, Hawaii to be represented. I wanted to be that, um, I guess person to look to, um, from the younger generation. I think you're, you're on your way in, in that sense before we end up here, finish up and I let you go. I want to say one, thank you so much for being gracious with your time. It's been a fun conversation so far. And two, you did mention someone earlier. I want to give you an opportunity to give a shout out to those Kaiser folk who you, you've mentioned a few times during this interview, really helped you out along the way and continue supporting you now. Uh, is there anyone back home you want to give a shout real quick, whether that's a teacher, coach, janitor, so on and so forth that right. just, they deserve it? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I'd love to give a shout out to uh, my teacher uh my old teacher, very um, long time ago, Auntie Tanya. Um, hi, Auntie Tanya. And then also my coach, Lane. I'd love to give my old soccer coach a uh, big shout out. Thank you for all he's done uh, for me and also my family. And um, and also uh, Coach Doug. Um, he wasn't um, necessarily a Kaiser coach, but definitely a, a big uh, part of my life. So, yeah. I think it's incredibly important to recognize the people. We, we've talked about it before on HSRN. It takes a village to build up, uh, and it certainly takes a lot of people to create successful athletes. Yeah. Last question before I let you go. <laughs> One more year of college soccer. What are you looking forward to most as you head into your final year of eligibility? Uh, well, I just um, technically I graduated. I'm walked, but I still have three more months. So um, I'm really just looking on focusing on soccer and just trying to make this one of my best seasons yet. I'm hoping that I can um, get some type of recognition um, within my conference, um, whether that's awards or anything. I'm really just trying to um, work my way up the the bracket of leaders, whether that's a uh, Hawaii, Hawaii Shamanad leaders, or um, just Pac West Conference leaders, I'm hoping to be at the top of that list this season. Uh, well, I mentioned it at the very top of the interview. I think those are good goals because it's what you've done since day one of stepping on Shamanad's campus, just continuing to climb your way up the ranks. I mentioned it before, third in a lot 
third or better, I should say, in a lot of different categories for Swords goalkeepers all time. And eh, well, with those uh, with those goals in mind, why not both? PacWest and Shamanad record books are coming uh, coming down this year. Thank you one more time to Shamanad men's soccer goalkeeper Brandon Yasue for joining me. Yes, thank you. For having me. Thank you.